Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Battletech. We've got enough tech work queued up to cover our travel time. We'll be doing getting productive stuff done the entire time we're in space. But before we uh, before we leave to risk our lives once again for Lady Arano, let's talk to her representative. That's I got to run Darius. I clicked on the wrong button. Sorry man, that's my bad. Alexander. Hey, how you doing? Commander Pavlov, welcome to my corner of the command center. From here, I can provide Mr. Oliveira with advice and information whenever he needs it. I want to be a resource for you as well. In keeping with my role as Restoration Liaison, I will give you whatever additional information I can about our campaign moving forward. Come see me after any major operation, and I'll share whatever I can. Yeah, how are things going right now? What's, what's, what's up with this war? Are we doing okay? Things are going well enough, Commander. Our initial attack on Weldry was an enormous success, despite the psychological cost of what we discovered there. Still, the Directorate's atrocities have steeled our resolve. I've never seen Lady Arano so determined. Uh... What you're saying is that you turned her speech into a PR stunt. <laughs> Hold on. Out of curiosity, Commander Pavlov, what did you think of her speech? I recorded it, you know. The broadcasts are on their way to every corner of Directorate space. Uh, phew. you know, it, it sounded raw, from the heart. Mastiff would have been proud, maybe. I, I, <laughs> I only sorta, I didn't know him that well. Good, that's what I was hoping to hear. The presumption of authenticity will carry us far. For what it's worth, Lady Arano meant every word she said, but the people may not see it that way. Espinosa's propaganda machine will do everything in its power to tarnish our accomplishments and drag us through the dirt. I can imagine the headlines now. Police and civil servants cut down by weapons of war. Dangerous convicts set loose by traitor, endangering nobles and commoners alike. A dangerous narrative, and one that we'll have to counter at every turn. With luck, many of our people will believe what they've heard in our broadcast over the Directorate's propaganda. But I fear that Espinosa's hardline supporters will be far less eager to listen. If we fail to turn them against the Directorate, we run the risk of ongoing violence, even after we liberate their home systems. That's why messages like Kamea's speech are so important. Uh... Well, Espinosa's supporters just saw the conditions on Weldry with their own eyes. You don't think that'll be enough to sway them? Some will be moved by our message, yes, but others will continue to embrace the Directorate's lies. These are people who've benefited from Espinosa's policies. They won't jump to condemn a system that has lined their pockets with wealth, and they won't want to feel complicit in its crimes. Capturing their loyalty will be a long, hard battle. We won't win it overnight. Well, you know, we do have Plan B, which is all these giant robots. Alright, Directorate's using propaganda, we need some of our own. Got it. Sadly, yes. If we're going to win this war, we need to rally the Oregon people, including a percentage of Espinosa's supporters. They have to see that we're better than the Directorate again and again until our message is impossible to ignore. Man, good luck with that. In my experience, that is not exactly how it works. For you, that means military victories. For me, it means more broadcast, spin, and outreach. Public opinion is just another battlefield, and I'll be knee-deep in the trenches until the day I die. Uh, you're new on the crew. Tell me about yourself. You know, more than you just did. I'd be happy to, but honestly, Commander, I've been so consumed with matters of war of late that I wouldn't even know where to begin. Uh, well, tell me about who you were before all of this horrible, horrible stuff. A noble scion. Much the same as you were, from what I understand. As a fellow noble, I'm sure that you already know more than most about my upbringing. It was a life of great privilege, and even greater expectation. That's true, this guy and I actually do have uh, a lot of similarities in our background now. I spent my early years invested in academic pursuits, the study of history, mathematics, and statecraft. I strove to excel at every subject, anything to avoid disappointing my mother and father. The extent to which they would come to disappoint me is a cruel irony, but it's one that I've come to accept. Uh, it must be hard to have your own parents betray you. This, this is different from our backstory, certainly. Oh, it is. Nothing could be harder. When Kamea retakes her throne, there will be a reckoning, and Directorate collaborators will be tried for their crimes. My mother and father will be at the front of that list. And, as terrible as it feels to say it, they'll deserve whatever punishment they receive. Yeah, I'm... that's... that's a real bummer, man. I'm sorry. 
Your apologies are unnecessary. By any metric you care to mention, I've lived a charmed life. The hardships of the past three years don't erase the lifetime of privilege I enjoyed before Espinosa's coup. It would be dishonest of me to pretend that they did. But still, I'm happy to change the subject if you wish. Listen, good on this guy for having some perspective, you know? Tell me about Goldra. This is where he's from, I assume. I, I guess I probably already know that. Bell knows that. I, I apparently did not know that. A truly beautiful one. You should really travel there sometime after all this is over and see it for yourself. Imagine lush green lowlands giving way to mile upon mile of white sand coastline. Sandy beaches kissed by warm, salty seas, and soft rain perfumed with saffron and cardamom. And that's not to mention the wildlife. Close your eyes and imagine it, Commander. Shield terns wheeling and soaring, their brilliant plumage glittering in the sunlight. Leviathan sablefish flashing silver beneath the waves. Dolphinfish leaping, breaching the surface of the water in riotous streaks of yellow and green. I, I'm, I'm assuming a dolphin fish is different. It's not just a dolphin. I've never heard of that before, though. Places like Goldra are special, Commander Pavlov. They must be preserved. This is what we're fighting for. Something unspoiled and unique and ours. Something that reminds us how good the periphery can be. Yeah, that's uh, that's real cool and all. Uh, can we talk about something else, maybe? Actually, uh, never mind. I gotta get ready for the... The whatever. I gotta get ready to sit in a chair for 22 days while we fly to the, to the mission. We should check this store before we go, probably. So, it looks like not a lot of new stuff appearing. Do we want to buy this AC2? Probably not. Yeah, well, we need to find us some uh, some larger bore auto cannons. I don't think we have room for another LRM ten. You know what? I'm gonna buy both of these close range weapons. I don't know that we even need them, but if we're thinking about potentially building more melee type mechs, it'll be useful to have these around, and they're so cheap. New weapon systems available. We'll get. We'll get a machine gun and like a couple. I think we have a spare MG already. I'll buy a couple of small lasers. Alright. I really do want to put together a good punch mech, and I don't know what availability or prices are going to be like on any other world, so let's just take the opportunity while we got the opportunity. Also, seriously, very, very cheap. Alright, let's get on it. So, all of the missions that we have available right now are travel missions. We could go to somewhere else and try to find. Missions local to that, but I think we'd probably, it would probably be best if we headed to Panzer. This is our first big push to liberate a founding house of the Oregon Co Coalition. I don't know what to expect any more than you do, but I'd suggest rolling with the best mechs we've got. You know, just in case. Yeah, I think we've got it under control. Everything will be fixed up. Um... Pretty soon, actually. The, a lot of the work we have at the end of the queue is trying to make the other mechs that we're not currently running a little better. The Argo's current budget includes, includes a line item for crew entertainment, so after polling the morning briefing for preferences, Darius places an order. Soon a shipment of popular new holovid ships from Herotitus arrives. A mix of action, historical drama, horror, screwball comedies, and animated features. Oh, if we had, uh, if we had an upgraded lounge, we could... Reserve the private screening room for the senior staff. This seems like a crappy thing to do. I think the pilots are probably the ones who need the most, uh, the most relaxation time. Uh, so do we want to host a mass viewing in the mess or circulate holovid chips? You know, people don't all like the same thing, but also, there's a kind of a... There's a, a beauty in being part of a live, diverse audience for a thing. It's why I like... It's why I still like going to the movies so much, despite the fact that, you know, home theaters and stuff have, uh, have evolved so much. Let's, uh, let's bolster Team Unity a little bit here. After setting up the biggest holovid screen you can find in the mess, you invite the crew of the Argo to join you at a screening of the new episode of The Fringers. I almost said Fringers, that's almost certainly Fringers. One of the longest-running holovid uh, series, Fringers recently passed 150 seasons. Its constantly rotating cast portrays the grit and misery of colonists living on the periphery edge of the Free Worlds League. 
Ironically, the show's popularity is often attributed to the fact that the lives of its characters are consistently worse than those of its fans. Given the show's popularity, almost everyone attends. Unfortunately, Medusa constantly interrupts, shouting at the screen and arguing with others about everything the creators did wrong ever since the 128th season. Yeah, I was gonna say, hey, this show, <laughs> when we got to its 150th season, I was about to say, hey, it kind of sounds like The Simpsons of Battletech, and now it sounds even more like The Simpsons. You barely get him out of the mess before a fight breaks out, and he's mad that people don't understand. They screwed everything up. This pilot has low morale and will not be able to use inspiration abilities as often in battle. Well, that's unfortunate. To be fair, we don't usually have him do the called shots. I guess, actually, fairly often, especially with, like, him having better SRMs and stuff. Him getting right up on top of people and being able to, uh, to, like, make called shots to their back armor or to the important arm or whatever uh, has been important and is going to get more important as we continue to improve his close-range firepower. So this is a bummer. The good news is, I'm pretty sure we have more than 14 days of travel left. So there's your silver lining. Yeah, we do. He'll be mad, but it'll all be worked out by the time we get where we're going. Man. I know that this is a real thing that people do, like, in the Navy, but also on space voyages and everything, but holy crap, I cannot imagine Super being, complete, being packed in a tin place. can here. Uh, with the same small group of people in the same small space for like months and months as we're just traveling around. That sounds a little miserable. Alright, so the bays are functional. We should start the next upgrade. A refit harness? What does this do? Just extra tech points? I mean, that's not bad. I do like, I do like fast repairs. This is also just tech points. For this, we would need improved power conduit, conduits and basic structural repairs. We could buff up the lounge a little bit. I'm trying to think. We don't really need the new mech bays. Not immediately. Habitat pods is just I can host extra pilots. I don't know that I really want to. Mech warriors gain 20 experience each day. Warriors with less than 10,000 total experience benefit from this training. Okay. Less than 10,000 total. That's actually pretty low, isn't it? I don't know how valuable this is. I think a lot of our a lot of our pilots are probably at the 10,000 threshold or maybe even higher. We can't upgrade our medical bay. I suppose extra morale. I think it's probably worth uh, worth pursuing. Or do I care more about faster I pr I probably care more about faster repairs and refits. Alright, 270,000, 20 days to complete. It'll take a bit, but we'll get it done. Yeah, I think that's probably the best the best thing we could pursue at this point. Alright, let's continue the journey. I do wish we could improve the medbay a little bit. We we really could use faster healing. Pilots can get injured for a very long time. Okay, so where are we at? Yeah, we have all the important stuff done. That work order you submitted is complete. Medusa's lost his low spirits. You are. And we can go back to standard um, standard operating expenses now. Yeah, I don't think it makes sense to, uh, to cut morale, especially not given how close to the Inspire threshold we are. Yeah, we'll just run normal. We only actually have four months of... Living expenses at this rate. Yeah, we'll be fine. Do I want to... You know what? I'm not going to put anything in the bay. I probably should, right? We should have stuff running. I was going to say I'm probably not going to put anything in the bay so it's available if we need to do fast repairs. But we can just reorder stuff. So can I pull... My mechs out of storage here? Yeah, the spider... What do I do here? I don't know that I would ever actually use the spider again, but Got it. let's get this stuff, this stuff out and in position. And actually, I'm going to reorder these. 
Because for real, I don't know that I'll ever use the spider again. But if we have the slot, we may as well, right? We might just end up selling the thing. Okay. So that's something productive that the engineering crew can be, do can be doing while we're finishing travel here. Alright, uh, hold on. Don't launch the contract yet. Glitch is still out of action for two days, and... Oh, Bell's actually out of action for one. Well, we're definitely not going... yet. I guess Bell can just replace Glitch for the moment. We'll, yeah, we'll just chill for a day until, uh, until Bell is good. Job's done, Commander. Okay, Bell's returned to duty, and all of our, uh, all of our mechs are ready. So let's have a quick look at Bell before we go in. Like I said, I expect that we're going to have to use our character for stuff. Amazing. So I think it, it behooves us to make sure that he has a lot of XP. Where do I want to end up with him? We haven't made any big choices on skills yet. So let me think. What do we know now that we didn't know before? What would be a good build? I mean, obviously, multi-targeting and gunnery are important. I wonder if we could go, like, gunnery piloting? I don't think we have anybody who's gunnery piloting, right? I do wish when you moused over these pips that it would show you what your... Uh, what the actual effect of them is, the way it does with the, with the skills. But our, our deal with Bell can be, uh, we try to put him in the fast gun mechs, and try to build up situation, uh, try to build a situation where... Uh, like Medusa sometimes gets to, he can take two actions in a row and just really blow something up. Or punch the crowd, you know, just very offense-focused. Since, as far as I'm aware, I think it's pretty obvious from what happened, and also because people told me in the comments, I believe it is the case that our main character cannot die. He can only be injured. So, if we're gonna try a crazy risky playstyle, he's the one to try it with. Right? I think that makes sense. Okay, so he has multi-target available for the mission. Let's do the thing. Have we attempted and missed a melee attack? I know it's possible, but... It, it does not seem to happen very often. Alright, let's go. No more hemming and hawing. Welcome to Panzer, Commander Pavlov. Lady Arano and the Restoration Army are already fighting on the planet's surface, and have been for weeks. Yes, yeah, sorry, we were pretty far away. <laughs> With the aid of House Decimus' ground support facilities, Ms. Meyer will carry your lance through Panzer's orbital debris field and drop you on the surface. Uh, tell me a little bit more about this debris field. It's a holdover from the Amaris Civil War. That's, yep, I know what that is. Uh, I happen to know that, of course, it was known as the Amaris Kerensky Civil War and as the Amaris Coup. A war fought in the years 2766 to 2780, so that's like 300-ish years ago, right? We're in 30-something, the low 30s. Ultimately led to the dissolution of the Star League. In the years preceding, Stefan Amaris of the Rimworld's Republic had become a close confidant of the young First Lord of the Star League, Richard Cameron. Amaris betrayed the First Lord's trust and killed him on December 27th, 27, 2766. That's pretty betrayed. That's like almost the maximum amount of betrayed. He then executed all remaining members of House Cameron, there it is, that's the maximum, and seized the throne for himself. In response, General Alexander Kerensky led the Star League Defense Force to conquer and destroy the Rimworld's Republic, and then turned their might towards Stefan Amaris on Terra. Kerensky's SLDF defeated Amaris and executed him and his family in late 2779. Uh, that's an impressive length for that conflict, though. The elimination of both House Cameron and House Amaris left no clear successor for the title of First Lord, and the Council Lords could not agree. On August 12th, 2781, the Lords dissolved the Star League. So, there was a great battle in orbit over Panzer like 300 years ago, and most of the wreckage is still there in the form of a dense field of particulate material. I was about to say, what, nobody bothered to clean that up, but I guess I don't really know how you would... I don't know what the, the, pro, the procedure is for cleaning up a massive field of orbital debris. <laughs> it might be a very difficult thing to do. Navigating the field unassisted would be a formidable task. Thankfully, we'll have the Spaceport's control center on our side. It'll be able to guide us in and to send uh, tugs to assist us if necessary. Alright, are uh, you feeling okay with that, Samiri? Can you do that? Oh yeah, Commander, no sweat. 
With the kind of navigation support I'll be getting from ground control, I could take us through the field with my eyes closed. Cool. Don't, though. Don't do that. Alright, what happens after we're on the surface? Lady Arado wants your lance behind enemy lines. While she leads from the front, you will harass the Directorate's supply train and target valuable military hardware. She already has a target list drawn up for you. Hold that thought, Lord Madeira. Commander, I'm getting a tight beam communication from the planet's surface. It's Lady Arano and it looks urgent. Oh, good. Bell, you couldn't have arrived at a better time. Our forces on the surface desperately need your help. With the support of House Decimus, we're making our final push against the Directorate's last major stronghold. Our forces are fully committed to the attack and we're pushing them back, but the Directorate just seized control of Panzer's only remaining spaceport. Oh, that's a problem for us, isn't it? With it, they'll be able to call down reinforcements at will. I need someone to take the spaceport's control tower away from them. Bell, that someone is going to have to be you. This means that Ms. Meyer will need to carry you through the debris field unassisted. I hope that her skills are up to the task. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Well, this day just got more interesting. She seems confident-ish. I'm afraid there's more. Oh, it gets worse. Alexander, I've just received a message from Lady Centrella. There's been a major incident on perdition. It looks like a terrorist action, a chemical attack against the port city of Harlow's Landing. Initial casualty reports suggest some 11,000 dead. Holy. That's a serious chemical attack. Do we know perdition? Am I familiar with this? A Torian system planted on the border with the Federated Suns. Its primary industry is aquaculture, exporting a planetary surface area, exploiting, not exporting, the planetary surface, of over 83% water. Three main continents are Hell, Hades, and Purgatory, and its capital city is Damnation. That's... that's just lovely. The leadership of Perdition participated enthusiastically in the periphery uprising of the 2700s against the Star League. Wait a minute. So what are the... what are the political implications of this? It says... On the border with the Federated Suns. So it is... it's in the Torian Concordat. Okay. Yeah, atrocity. That's a good word for it. My sentiments exactly. How have the Torians responded? In predictable fashion, Protector Calderon is claiming that the attack was an act of Davion aggression in violation of the Ares Conventions. He's already calling it the Perdition Massacre. Also, not an inappropriate word. For their part, the Davians have de denied all knowledge of the attack. Their denials will fall on deaf ears. Calderon won't believe anything that Hans Davian has to say. This is going to accelerate our time travel. Timetable. We should probably try to figure out time travel, though. That could be very helpful. We need to retake your throne before this situation gets any worse. If a war was to erupt between the Federation and the Concordat, it could easily spill into the Reach, and we can't afford that kind of chaos. See, this is what I was kind of thinking when I was saying what are the implications of that, uh, especially if we were trying to appeal to the core uh, empires for assistance, they're going to be a lot less likely to assist us if they have large problems of their own to deal with. I can't say I like the idea of a couple of superpowers inserting themselves into our campaign. Then we better push forward before that happens. I want you to proceed with the drop. And Bell, I'm expecting this deployment to be a difficult one. Bring your best, and may the gods grant you victory. We will all be counting on your success. Okay, but what if I bring... Almost all my best, but also myself. You heard the Lady Mitch. Best get to it. Meyer, I'm going to go ahead and trust that you've got this. Do me a solid and try not to scrape the leopard's paint on your way down. Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll do my best. Also, don't kill me. I guess I'm invincible. Don't kill everyone else. Behemoth especially. So, this is a part where, um... This is a part where it feels a little silly, the way things have worked out. Like, the, the way the, the game mechanics interact with the story. Because I have six functional mechs and six functional pilots, I should absolutely drop everything plot-wise, right? Because this is an incredibly desperate situation, and thousands of lives, and the state, the uh, state of the Republic and the Rebellion are all hinging on this. But we're only going to send four people down, because that seems fairest. <laughs> we wouldn't want to overwhelm them. Alright, so... Boy, Bell is really a much worse pilot than Glitch is. But we're doing it. We're going. Bell's got to get his XP. So I think... 
Yeah, I think having him pilot the Centurion makes sense. This means that we don't have an easy way to get target locks for the Jaeger mechs uh, LRMs, though. So maybe I should swap Panama and Bell. The thing is, I want Bell to be able to get a little closer. The Jaeger mech is so slow. Yeah, all right, we're just going to do this without the ability to easily sensor lock for the LRMs. I think we'll be okay, except we're attacking a, a an emplacement, or we're attacking a reinforced position. Um, torn. I'm torn. Yeah, all right. Let's swap these two. We need the sensor lock to not be on the Jaeger mech. There's like a pretty good chance that we will, in fact, encounter turrets and stuff here. And we may need to fight them the way we fought them last time. In battle, speed is life. You go slow, you die. I don't know. I think sometimes a cautious siege is definitely the right play. I wonder if we'll ever get enough accuracy for head targeting to be a uh, to be a real strategy. I'm just thinking it would be so much easier for us to maintain our financial position if we could reliably get out of battles with uh, multiple pieces of mechs, multiple pieces of the same mech, so that we could do the um, so that we could do the salvage and the rebuild thing. And the way we're doing things right now is making a lot of parts of the mech unsalvageable on account of how much that they have been exploded. A little bit more accuracy might uh, might be helpful, not just for combat reasons, but also for long-term campaign reasons. I'm a little worried also about um, us maybe not getting down to the planet in one piece. I wonder if all of this stuff about the debris field was setting us up for hitting the planet already damaged or something. Maybe we can't quite make the landing we want and, you know, one or more of our mechs has leg damage or something. Um, I said that thing uh, last episode, or maybe it was the episode before, I don't remember, about uh, trying to get a heavy mech with armored enough legs that we could do death from above without uh, sustaining considerable uh, structural damage. I don't actually know for sure that the damage your mech takes from doing DFA is uh, is deflected by armor it may be the case that all that armor goes all that damage goes straight to the structure we might want to uh might want to try a little dfa just to get a handle on the mechanics so we know if that's even a viable thing to try to do bander i'm glad you made it navigating ba panzer's debris field unassisted is no small feat even for a ship as small as a leopard Ms. meyer is to be commended for her skill yeah can we do that later though i want to focus here no sweat, just don't ask me to do it again. <laughs> you won't have to. Restoration strike teams have already joined forces with the 2nd Decimus Fusiliers to engage the enemy on multiple fronts. We have them at a disadvantage, but if they manage to bring in reinforcements, we're in trouble. Bell, I need you to engage the enemy, locate their dropship control center, and destroy it. Without ground support, their ships won't be able to navigate the debris field. The Directorate's troops on the surface will be cut off, and our combined forces will sweep them away. Sorry to interrupt, Lady Arano, but we've just intercepted a transmission from the ADV Coronach. They're requesting navigational aid. Sounds like they're on their way down. Okay, so we're on the clock, then. If that ship lands, our bid for this system fails. Bell, I need you to take out that control center before the Coronach touches down. The second can help with that. We have a leopard full of engineers heading your way. Commander, I'll need you to clear us a path to the spaceport's security headquarters. Take out their vehicles and make us some breathing room and we'll turn their turret defenses against them. So don't destroy all the turrets, then. That's the plan, then. We'll use the turrets to cover your approach. As soon as we have the turrets under control, the director will begin firing on them. Use that as a distraction or engage the enemy to protect them. It's your call either way. All right. Good hunting, Commander. You bring down the control center and we'll handle the rest. Good Fifteen luck. rounds. Okay, so we have six rounds to get to the gar to blow up the, uh, the garrison units. It sounds like... We're expecting vehicles, not mechs. And then 15 rounds to actually get the control center uh, taken care of. Well, it looks like we are starting... Yeah, we're starting right on top of this objective, at least. 
Who do I want to step forward first? Probably, probably Behemoth, right? Going first is kind of her whole thing. Alright, so we're reading three contacts. Seeing Directorate SRM carriers on radar. Recommend engaging them at long range. Yeah, that I was just about to say. I bet SRM carriers are terrifying. <laughs> Okay. So we can't see those, but they probably are the same thing. I think it's crazy that at this range we don't know for sure that they're vehicles. So when we say SRM character, okay, that's a huge number of SRM6s. What is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? That is 60. Yes. 60 short range missiles per volley. Criminy. I, I think it would be understating to say that I'm incredibly worried about this. I think I probably don't want to move Medusa forward until we have a shot with him, right? If I present him to the SRM carriers, he's going to die. Oh man, there's so many of them too. Okay, we're looking at about... 70 damage dealt to any location is probably lethal. <sighs> Boy, I'm worried. Alright, let's get the read on this stuff. I'm thinking, uh, given the positions of things, these SRM carriers, as this one especially, are probably targetable from the hill. I want to get over here and try to take out some of these. We have to lower the number of carriers that we're facing now. Or we have a serious chance of losing our front max. Same deals. A bulldog with a large laser and some smaller SRMs. And an SRM-6 LRM-10. Okay, so these guys are actually considerably less dangerous. I think I'm more worried about... You? Large laser's 45 damage, right? LRMs are pretty, uh... Pretty weak. Yeah. Alright, let's try to take this one out. Pretty good odds. Not lethal. We had some misses in there. And some embarrassing misses. Okay, we're being bombarded from something that we can't see. Commander. So I can't know for sure if I'll get the shot on that guy, but I, like, I must be able to from here, right? Although, I guess we need vision. Commander. Might be Medusa's time to run forward and get us some sight. I didn't realize we were going to lose sight of the uh, the thing here. But we know that the two SRM carriers are going at one. So we can probably just reserve for now. It's going to mean the Shadowhawk eats the attacks from these two, which is probably fine. Of all of our mechs, that's the one that I would most want to do that. Yeah, I think we're going to reserve from here. I want a little bit more information about the situation. We will not reserve again, because I definitely want everybody to act before the SRM carriers do. Wow, something just dumped a crazy number of LRMs on us. Okay. Now we need Medusa to run forward and get vision. We need it for everybody else. Five evasive charges. Good luck, buddy. He's probably in SRM firing range. It's not going to be good range, but... No, he is not. He does not have... Shoot. Well, if we have him go to Vigilance... Oh, there's no reason to do Vigilance if you're, gonna, if you're just going to brace. Yeah, all right. Just brace and provide me vision so that I know I can, uh, know I can get my shots here.
The Jaeger mech is probably the most likely to actually get a kill. I think this is the shot. Get a couple charges, we get cover. Man, I hope I can kill one of these things. Let me see something real quick. Can I... I cannot select her enough to see what her movement options are. I'm not 100% sure she can move into a position where she can see this one. This is my concern. No, we're probably okay. We're probably okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fire everything at this guy. Are we... No, probably nothing's in range of the medium lasers. Yeah, I can mouse over them and see what our percentages will be. Okay. I was going to turn on multi-target if we could hit anything. If we had even a chance of hitting anything else with the lasers. But here we go. I sure hope this thing dies. Well, I saw a miss. Okay. Both the AC-5s hit, though. AC-5s hit the same place. It's good for us. We might be able to get the other one. It's less likely. We might have to endure one shot from an SRM carrier. Honestly, it, we're pretty far away from it the way we've set up. It might not... If the if the, uh, the Jenner's not in SRM range... Ooh, head hit, huh? That's a shame. Yeah, if the... Uh, if the Jenner's not in SRM range, it might be that this thing can't get into SRM range either. Okay, it looks like we can't get cover and the shot we want. It says indirect to that guy. So we'll go here, two charges, and Moving. just mm -hmm. fingers crossed. If the, if the large laser and the AC-2 hit the same spot, no, that wouldn't even be enough damage. If the, the large laser and the LRM-10 hit the same spot, that would be lethal. Can I... Precision strike a tank? Do I actually, like, get a... I do. Okay, we really... We really, really want to kill this thing. Structure damage. Yes! Okay, excellent. Vehicle kill for me. So the normal normal headshot chance, the normal chance of an attack hitting the head, seems to be 1% based on the percentages that we see when we uh, select called shot. So it's kind of crazy that we're seeing them happen as frequently as we are. This should be, like, really rare. Okay, a bulldog. That's not great, but uh, you know what is great? It's not a... it's not an SRM carrier. Like, hits, never been happier. So obviously the Shadowhawk's gonna be... Nope, never mind. The Shadowhawk's probably gonna be on its back. What am I getting hit by? Reporting heavy Something way off in the distance. Alright. Shadowhawk's gonna be stomping. Need to do a little stomp. Yep. Can the Jenner get in melee range? Okay, yeah, I think we definitely do this. Actually... It probably makes more sense for the Jenner to just run up and point-blank dump into stuff than to stomp. Yeah, if it's only going to do 35 damage, that'll be 70 damage because vehicles take double damage from melee. But 70 damage doesn't actually kill it. Yeah, there's nowhere on its body. Okay, 70 damage to the rear section would kill it. Uh, so let's, let's run up, run right up on top of it and just dump into it. But do I want to do that now? Yeah, I think that's okay. What is what is this? Bulldog's a little scary, I guess. I think we're gonna be able to kill everything. But I guess there's no reason for me to um no reason for me to do anything other than reserve right now. Because we know none of them are uh Can I turn off the Yeah, there we go. We know none of them are acting during three, so. Let's make some other plays, figure some stuff out. Her stomps are lethal, for sure. The head of her mech actually hasn't even lost its armor yet. She's been hit twice, but it's been, you know, individual missiles. She's in bad shape, though. She's going to need a little, little bit of downtime. I'm thinking we don't know exactly what we're taking fire from over here, but I want to make sure that my front armor is facing it. And I'm confident enough with our ability to get rid of the rest of the vehicles that I think this is worth, this is safe 
turns out 85 damage doubled against vehicles is a very reliable kill. I've been sensor locked. Okay, something over there is acting on three. Right here. Mm -hmm. I think we definitely just want to close in as much as possible. We have a, a mission target to get to over there. And I'm going to let this guy have it because this guy is the, the one we can dump on point blank with the Jenner. So what are we looking at? Over 100 damage for a kill to the front. Totally possible. Here goes everything. Ah. Did not get it. Man, that's like 30 missiles. Yeah, we gotta do something about that. Ready for orders. Alright, so there's a chance... There's a chance that the, uh, the Jaeger mech will get to go before this guy and finish him off. I'm gonna go for this. I think we can probably do it. I guess I can just hit him from this side. I don't necessarily want to show my back to whatever's raining death on us from over here. Oh wait, we're not meleeing though, sorry. We're moving close and then dumping a ton of lasers and SRMs into him at point blank range. On my way. Fortunately, medium lasers have a minimum effective range of inside of the enemy, so. Look at you with your two evasive charges. Ridiculous. So we probably have to get about 80 damage in. Means a lot of this has to hit. Am I going to precision strike this thing? Just like, for real, let's get this dead. It has to work. Okay. Having both of those tanks alive with the Jenner this close would be very dangerous. And I believe, yeah, even without that, even without that boost, I believe we still had enough morale to benefit from the uh, inspired uh, thing. Okay, and Bell does get to take a turn before this thing does, so we probably have this guy down. Probably Medusa's not going to take any real fire here. Uh, I probably don't need to do anything crazy. We have to hit for about 60 to the front. I think that that's very likely to occur. Alright. Lieutenant Endress, your approach to the security HQ, HQ is clear. After that, we'll have their turrets under friendly control in just a moment. Yes, please hurry. <laughs> Engage the forces guarding that control center, Bell. Let's make these turrets count. Yeah, I don't really have a plan here because the uh, terrain of our approach is sort of unclear to me. It's uh, it's very foggy, and there are trees. Medusa's going to be so nervous. Okay, it looks like most of those missed, so we're not going to fall over. We really, really need to take a, a turn or two here without taking massive stability damage. Ignore the turrets and concentrate your fire on those battle mechs. We must protect the control center. If our reinforcements can't land, we're all dead. Yeah, the, you got it. That's right. That's the situation you are living in. Okay, so we have some friendly turrets now. Uh, as turrets tend to do, they operate on one. And this dragon is friendly as well? Is that right? No, it can't be. Yeah, we're only showing one positive uh, symbol on two, and that's our Jaeger mech. I'm not 100% clear what's happening here. I suppose we'll figure it out. So, we still have... We have a Jenner. We have something over here. A Panther. And some kind of unknown something that I'm going to assume is a mech. So I'm wondering if it's safe to run up this far. It's going to mean that he's taking a lot of fire, potentially. But also, information's important. He's got cover and five evasive charges. And, you know, if he draws their attention off a little bit, that's not the end of the world. Although, maybe what I should do is pass so that both of their fours go. If I don't present a target for their fours, they're both just going to hit the Shadowhawk, though, and Behemoth's going to take another point of damage from falling over. So actually, I think I am 
I am invested here in pro providing an alternative target so that we can maybe prevent them from knocking Behemoth down. Also, I do think it's kind of frustrating that she took she took a big hit from one of these guys, and then it immediately started a new round, so they're going to get another hit on her. This is a hunchback. I don't really know what a hunchback is. It looks like they are not particularly interested in fighting the turrets that are all around them, which seems like a bad play to me. Okay, so... It looks like there's no... There's no particular stability benefit to not moving in. Okay, the dragon's reading is hostile. It's just not... It's not showing up in an in an angry enough color for my for my liking. So this thing moves slowly. This is probably the thing that was bombarding us with the LRMs. Well, it's not the only thing that was. That's a wow, that's a double PPC turret. That's a good thing to have on our side. I'm trying to figure out where all of the missile fire was coming from. Bunch of AC2s and machine guns. It's a strange design for a turret. Given that machine guns are only functional at point blank range. I guess it must have been... Oh, there's a trebuchet over here with a pair of LRM-15s. This is what it was. Okay. Um, maybe what I want to do, actually, is... Unsteady units cannot sprint. Let's see. I have a medium laser. I have this AC-5. Um, up here, we're not going to get very good range. I moved down here. Actually, we're still in really long range for everything. I'm just trying to think, like, maybe I want to I wanna get her to a position where she's less likely to get murked by those dudes. Looks like I can break line of sight. They'd have to do a sensor lock to, to hit me with stability damage again. I just, I really need her to recover a little bit. So we'll break line of sight. If they want to spend the sensor lock, there's nothing we can do to prevent that, but we can make it at least take two actions for them to get in on her. And, yeah, Brace. Okay, Bracing does clear all stability damage. Okay. So they no longer have line of sight on us. Ah, they have line of sight on the Jenner. Well, he's doing the thing I wanted him to do. Providing a distraction. I'm listening. So what I probably want to do with my two longer range units is get in over here and break down these support units, right? These ranged support units. I'm wondering, it looks like I can't get a good shot from here on this guy. I'm not getting the, the white line that indicates that I will have vision of him. I could get a long range shot on the dragon. Only the AC2 is going to be able to hit at that range. What's the maximum range for a light laser? Or a large laser, rather. I really wish you got the detailed weapon loadout uh, information. So, like, if I were to move here... Yep, just the AC2 at this range. You drop some LRM fire on one of these guys. I'm trying to think. Maybe, maybe it's worth it for her to not go yet. We can let these guys move in, in the hopes that they'll move into a position where I can get a direct line of sight on them. Pass her down to the next turn. That'll let the Hunchback go, which has no bearing on our current actions. The Trebuchet, and I think this guy was a three. Right, and then they still have the Gunner at two that might also go before us if I pass. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna reserve. Let's let them move up. Okay, he doesn't have a shot. I wonder if the Hunchback is a... The Hunchback must be a lighter mech. He seems uh, nervous about getting directly involved in combat. Okay, this is the kind of thing I want. I want to get a direct shot on that thing, and I just want to put it away. So, let's see... So let's have a look at this thing. What is this thing's deal? 
It has an AC 20. What is an AC 20? I want that. Where's that at? It's on your right torso. This is not our target. He's unfortunately very far away, but I'm, I'm worried about AC 20. That sounds dangerous. I think what we're doing is we're just letting this guy have it. Uh, it probably could go for a precision strike, actually. So is it LRM, an LRM in each arm to make it harder for me to break them both down? No, one in the right torso, one in the left arm. Okay. And he's got our, he's got his ammo split over two different locations, so we can't blow it all up with one shot, which is smart. Frustrating, because that's exactly what I want to do. I think we're going to go for a precision strike on him. We can really use the extra hit chance. And let's try to take one of these locations. So either way, we get a medium laser and an LRM. I guess this side has... This side has one more laser. So this is where I want the shot to go. See if we can take out the torso and the arm, get three of his guns down. Oh, well, we exposed the structure at least. Pierce the armor. Alright, let's see what this thing's gonna do. That's a cool paint job. Okay, it's not gonna do anything, yeah. is what it's gonna do. We get we can get close enough to get an obstructed shot. Hey, you know, it's better than nothing. On my way. Really would like to hit this thing again. We don't have to hit it very well. Do I have light laser or large laser shots on anything? We can put some LRMs into the. Okay, that's fine. We'll do that. No, nah, you know what? We'll just hit. We'll just hit the uh, the trebuchet here. I'm not gonna spend morale again. I'd, I'd like to hold on to the inspired bonus. What's his... Hold on. He's at 45 here, so I would have to hit with both weapons to this to kill him anyway. Which means the... Or to, to get rid of it. Which means the called shot probably wouldn't even let us do this. Fire. Just hit him. Keep softening him up. Looks like a lot of misses there. Okay, we did... Oh! One of our... One of the LRMs hit the left torso, and it happened to crit his uh, crit his weapon. That's excellent. All right, let him have it. Please don't, please don't miss all your PPC shots. Could you maybe like do that in a more intelligent order? Strip the evasive charges with the other targets, and then uh, with the other turrets, and then get him with the PPC when it's likely to actually work. There you go. That's how you want to do that. So we lost a bunch of torso armor somewhere in there. Oh, this camera angle is not... <laughs> the camera didn't get where it needed to go until after the attack had fully resolved. Well, I'll tell you. Can I... I can't, I can't quite get close enough for the DFA. I'm not really sure what to do here. So this guy is actually facing away from us. We could fire into the back of the hunchback. We could run up and threaten these dudes. This Jenner still has an action, so I'm not sure that I want to close with him much more. He's got a very similar build. So I have three evasive charges in cover. He's probably, I, I assume his plan is to run up and medium laser me in the face really hard. Because that's what my plan is. But he's going to be firing uphill. If he can only move about as far as I can move, he's firing uphill into three evasive charges and, uh, and cover. And then I will get to fire on him downhill. Probably into like three or four evasive charges and cover. Still, it's better for me and I have more weapons than he does. I have slightly better SRMs. I'm going to reserve. Okay. 
If he does that, then that makes this shot a lot safer. We can just run up and hit this thing in the back. But I don't think... Oh, that thing's going to get a turn soon. I, if I want to do this, I have to kind of get on it. I'm a little scared of that AC-20. AC where is where is that being stored? Right torso. And his back right torso armor is 2060. I wonder if we can make the called shot and get this. Because we have what? Uh, we have like 100 and... We have about 160 damage available to us. It's like, this is dangerous. Five evasive charges in cover. If we can take out that AC-20, he's going to be a hero. This thing already took its turn, so he really only has to worry about these two. How big is this? I don't have a tonnage read on it. So I don't know how hard it's going to hit in melee is, is my big concern. I'm going to go for this. Coordinates received. Alright, Medusa. Hero time. The odds of this working are pretty poor. I was 37% is less. Less than I was hoping. We got it. We got it. Hit, right torso destroyed. We also crit the AC-20 before that happened, which does not matter. But we managed to turn that thing off before having to deal with it, and I think that is definitely worth the danger. Good to go. All right. So I think I want you to go of our yeah. of our threes probably last, so we can move up here. We can get a much cleaner shot on this guy. We're in cover, we have an evasive charge. That's... We're not in cover. Thought I was in cover. Well... You know, say la guerre. Let's, uh... So his other LRM is on the other arm, right? I don't have the morale for a targeted shot anyway. Yeah, just let him have it. Actually, we can probably multi-target. I bet our, yeah, our medium laser does not have a shot on this guy. In fact, it does not have a shot on anyone. Never mind. We're just going to put everything into the trebuchet. Guess I'll give it to him then. Good luck. I think I just hit on something special. So I'm not sure. I thought that a single crit destroyed the yeah, thing. But it looks like the crit, uh, the crit announcement and the destroyed announcement are different. So I'm not really sure what, what it means to have gotten the crit in that case, you know? So you just went. We still have to worry about you and you. There's three twos depicted here. Oh, uh, you're the other one. So who's this, who's this three? This guy, uh, the, the three is the guy who just went. What am I talking about? So we still have a fair number of enemies to go. She's fairly tough. I'm a little worried about these SRMs getting blown out, though. So maybe we want to attack while uh, presenting sort of our, like, attack like this, maybe? Have our right side presented to most of them. I don't think we're in SRM range of the Centurion down here. Uh, in fact, I have no, um... I have no attack at all on anything. That's a little... I just kind of assumed I would. I didn't even, didn't even look for the red lines. <laughs> Alright, well, present a target. You're very large and imposing. Alright, now we gotta weather this. The good news is they probably will spend some of their actions being concerned about the turrets. I certainly would. Okay, they're taking shots at the Centurion up here. That's that's good for us. That's a distraction. And Bell gets to act before the trebuchet. Great. We might, might be able to pull off something really cool here. So we could just go straight to it again. I want to... I think I want to move up. 
See, I can't generate... Yeah, I can't generate evasive charges and stay in cover, unfortunately. I think I'm much more concerned about cover. But I want to move up so that I have a, a better angle around this rock face. Same. Aim at these guys a little bit more. In the future. For right now, this is what matters. Do I have... No, I don't have medium laser range on anything. I was kind of hoping we'd be able to multi-target the medium lasers down onto the Centurion. Alright, well I don't think I want to do anything other than just totally unload. We don't have enough for a called shot, which I would absolutely take if we did. We're not going to get the stability damage we need, probably, unless we get some lucky hits to the legs. Yeah, alright, just let him have it. I mean, I guess the autocannons do a lot of stability damage. We've certainly softened this thing up considerably. So is it going to try to run around to a position where only indirect fire is available? Nope, it's just going to run away. I guess maybe it was concerned about the uh, mounting stability damage, and so it it just took a turn off to uh, to re resettle. I don't know what this hunchback is doing. I think they're getting they're getting a little flustered by the presence of all the turrets. Ah, pair of misses. That's a shame. We only have so many particle cannons. I really wish you guys would be more careful with them. Alright, we technically... I guess I was just looking at our objective here. We technically don't have to fight these robots. Maybe what I should be doing with the Jenner is trying to sneak it around the sides so that it can get closer to the uh, the dropship control center. Because that's the job, right? We're not, we're not here to fight. That said, I get to fall in, like, over here. And I can do both. I can sneak up on this thing while continuing to shoot guys in the back. This right here. This is, like, exactly what my goal was with this Jenner. Get around the back, establish flanks, do terrifying things. Uh, the question now is... Do I want to do it here? Or do we want to reserve a little bit? This guy will move if I reserve. But I'm concerned that by committing now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open myself up to getting shot an extremely large number of times. And the Jenner can't really sustain that much damage. We're well inside SRM range here. So he'll get a turn, maybe. Probably. We probably won't kill him. This general will get a turn, and it has the medium lasers to turn around and, and come mess us up pretty bad. The dragon's not on for quite a while. The panther already went. No, I think we can do this. I think we can sustain this. And this allows us to continue moving in on the building. Yeah, this thing right here. This is precisely what you are for. So we actually stripped the armor off of the back center torso. There's actually a really good chance this is a kill. I didn't realize we'd done so much damage to the center torso. Copy that. Gotcha. Alright, we managed to kill that thing without ever finding out what an AC-20 is. It, you know, it's a mixed blessing, because obviously it would have been cool to loot that AC-20. But also, given the way the damage scales between the 2s and 5s, I'm not sure we want to see a 20 in action. Okay, well... What have we got on this guy? Do we have... we don't have medium laser range. We do have his back, though, right? That's crazy. Why would he turn his back to us? Well, we could, uh, we could move up to here... Yeah, there's pretty good odds on everything. I think we gotta do this. So let's, uh, let's face like this. I don't think there's any danger of us not getting this building in time. We're gonna have all these mechs down soon, I think. A couple of turns. Alright, let him have it. Please let all of this stuff hit in the same area. Preferably the center. Okay. Damaged one of his medium lasers, and I do believe we stripped the armor on the back center. That looked like where most of that hit. Now the fleeing. The desperate fleeing. Oof. 
Yeah, those are some serious lasers. We have a lot of armor, though. Can I get two evasive charges while still being able to... Yes, I can. Heading out. This Jenner has a really good position. This is smart. Okay. What's this guy over here? This is the dragon. He hasn't acted yet. Taking some pretty significant rear damage from the turrets, but that's not super relevant to me. So his AC5 is in the right arm, that's a shame. So we're probably, we're not going to be able to prevent him from doing whatever he wants this turn. I think continuing to focus on the Centurion makes sense. It has too many lasers for me to feel safe around it. That's a shame, that damage was spread, like, all over the place. No more head hits. That shot went internal. Okay, we saw, I saw a structure exposed. I didn't see any orange numbers. So I think we're probably still okay on actual, like, we probably won't need real repairs. Let's move to here, where I have cover. I'm not going to have range with my medium lasers from here, though. Well, I assume. Hold on. Yeah. If I move to here, do I? No, if I move to here, I have no shot on the Centurion at all. Never mind. We'll just do it from here. This ridge has been good for us. I really like our team composition here, with the two long-range mechs and the... The tank and the, the fast-moving flanker. Uh, it's probably not worth calling the shot. Man, this thing has a lot of center armor. Yeah, it's not worth calling the shot with this much damage. We won't get the kill anyway. Let's just hold on to Inspired for everybody for a while. Alright, I saw some orange numbers there. Alright, pretty minor. Let's see these turrets. We've been stripping a lot of armor. These turrets might be able to get some real damage done. Awesome. That was a big hit, too. Okay, Centurion's pretty much done for. The Jenner is still healthy, but it's also close to some of our much larger mechs. So I, I expect it's either going to run away this turn, or it's going to try some jump jet, uh, like, melee nonsense. I actually wonder if it might try a death from above. Because it could probably jump jet onto the Shadowhawk. I didn't really think about that when I was moving her up there. Okay. Teamwork. It's good to see. Well, ah. I was hoping I was going to get to shoot that thing. Oof. That was a real structure hit right there. Was that left torso? Left arm? Both? <laughs> a little bit of both? Oh man, we're very close to losing this AC-5. The missiles are on the other side, but that's bad. Receiving you. Okay, so... We win the mission if I just get up the hill, but I probably ought to continue to provide actual fire support because we're we're not we are not not in danger, right? This is still a a scary situation. I get I can't get cover and evasive charges. I think I'd rather have the cover. Obviously, it's better not to get hit, but also. We know what the cover will do. It's possible, due to the nature of random number generators, that the evasive charges will do literally nothing. Which is a dangerous uh, proposition for a mech of this size. 
location confirmed. Yeah, I'm gonna hit this thing in the back. We got nine rounds. I can sprint up there in two, probably. I think we have time yet, and I think we have to we have to continue dealing meaningful damage. Back center's soft-ish. That's a lot of structure, actually. We could get it. What's uh what's odds? If I focus on the center, 41s. Let me think. I have to do 110 damage. We would need all of the SRM to hit, and then two of the medium lasers. Pretty bad odds. But we softened him up enough, he does have to play like he's really injured. Okay, we got there. Never mind, everything's fine. That's spectacular, actually. That's really, really good for us. And did that get us back to 50%? It did, so I think we're going to be inspired. Okay, Jenner's just running. That's gonna be a... yep. Commander, I'm wounded. She needs to Our back up. Internal damage. At this point, a lucky, a lucky hit could actually kill her. Standing by. Reporting. Uh, do they have... they do have another person going this turn. Yeah, Behemoth needs to leave. She needs to, like, get out. Oh, no, she can't actually get... She can't actually get to safety. We can run around here to make her a little bit less vulnerable. She needs to not expose her left side, though. We could run just run really far away. They have indirect fire capability, but they won't have vision, and they don't have time for a sensor lock. Yeah, I think just actual full-on fleeing. I do not want to lose Behemoth. She is way too valuable. Okay, and it showed us it's back, because it's more worried about the turrets than it is of us. It's more afraid of the turrets than it is of us, which I think is maybe an error. I really want to get good shots off on this Jenner. Because it's going to get to go first next turn, right? But unfortunately, the only position where I have an unobstructed shot on it does not give me any evasion. What are my odds on this thing? Oh, horrible. Yeah, maybe we do just keep hitting these two. What what is the deal with the Panther? I don't think it's fired once. It okay, it's a light mech that has a PPC. That's what its deal is. That's that's pretty cool, actually. I really like one of those. Yeah, man, a light a light fast mech as a delivery system for a single impressive weapon is an interesting idea, just like a sniper bot, basically. Alright, we could probably take his left arm. I think we just let him have it, although, can I get an obstructed medium laser shot on this thing? I can. Okay, yeah, totally worth the heat. Any chance of dealing damage. Firing at him. Right, seeing some good structure hits here. Get that arm. Well, we killed the laser at least. Aw. You know, it does still strip an evasiveness charge, even if we uh, even if we don't get anywhere near hitting him. Which is good for Bell. Uh, unfortunately, Bell, we might want to put some LRMs on the Jaeger mech or something. As it stands, we cannot uh, we cannot get any kind of hit at all if we don't have actual line of sight. I think I probably want to go after the trebuchet. Let's let the turrets worry about the backside of the Jenner. We'll hit the trebuchet in the back. This thing can't survive very much longer. It is very torn up. Yeah, that thing is that thing is one or two good turret shots away from being destroyed. They do have to hit though. Okay, I was gonna say, 
<laughs> is it seriously going to survive that? Wow, that's very unfortunate for him. I don't actually know where the PPC was. That might have removed the PPC. Yeah, poor thing didn't get to fire even once. All right, let's uh, let's finish this. We have plenty of time on the dropship control center. I think what I want to do is just run up here and hammer this Jenner. I'm not worried about the Panther at all. Yeah, the PPC's gone. All it has is a single SRM-4. It'll get to go before I do, but honestly, with the range that Panama and Bell have, it might not be alive. But I definitely want to get rid of this thing. Man, I need to get some even better SRMs. We might want to we might want to replace some of these medium lasers <laughs> with SRMs if we can. I love SRM launchers. Oh, hey, overheating. That's bad. Let's not do that. Kill a couple of these. We'll actually lose heat this way. Uh, do I want to take the called shot? I could. The SRM is in the middle. Nothing terribly important than jump jets. I assume that the, uh, the other lasers are symmetrical over the arms. Yeah. Alright. You know, given the damage from the SRM, we could kill this thing in a single shot. This Jenner is so good. <laughs> I love this thing. Mm. All right, Panama, what do you got? Uh, what you have is a clean shot from here to the back armor, but we may as well move up. Might be able to get medium laser range or just be able to chase him if he tries to run out through the pass over here. Yep, medium laser range. I think this is probably lethal. Confirmed. There's good odds. Oh, lethal's a little brave, maybe, but nope, never mind. Just destroyed everything. Damn. Pilot incapacitated. The clock is ticking, and that dropship is getting close. I'd recommend that you prioritize targeting the control center, Commander. I'm on it, I'm on it. Let's try to keep her close in case there's more stuff. I want the other mechs to be able to defend her, but obviously, uh, she can't be frontlined anymore. Confirmed. Getting a little bit of frame rate trouble here. All right, so the Jenner's got range on the thing next turn. It might take two turns of shooting at it uh, to kill it, but obviously, we extremely have this. Can I... can I get the shot this turn? Yeah. Move order received. I am so glad we got this Jenner. This thing has been wonderful. Acknowledged. Well done, Commander. Miss Meyer, are you inbound? Yes, because this time you're helping with the command... the, the command center, right? Proceed to the designated coordinates for evac. We, do we have to do that? Oh, we have to actually walk. That means that there could be a trap. Can I, can I... Okay, here we go. Now I can actually select my units. Roger that. Alright, well, we're close enough to the evac that even if some weird thing does happen and, like, an ambush appears or something, we could still just bail if we're allowed to. And we have all the turrets covering us. Yeah, we're not in any danger. Everything's fine. I'm just paranoid. You know, last mission they were like, just proceed to the dropship's coming in hot, and then the mission was immediately over. They didn't make us walk anywhere. So the fact that we have to walk makes me nervous. Move into position. Also... It's kind of tedious for us to have to walk over here if nothing's going to happen. So I'll be slightly annoyed. Boy, I sure hope that that space counts as in the hexagon. Kind of like on the edge. Yeah, okay, we're good. 
All right, things got a little hairy there. Shadowhawk is uh, getting a little overmatched. We've been able to use the Shadowhawk basically as just like a big steel wall for the rest of our mechs so far, but that is uh, coming to an end a little bit here. We might have to get something bigger. That's done it. All communication between the spaceport and the Directorate's reinforcement fleet just went down. Ground Control, this is the Koronok. We've lost you. Nav support is offline. Where are the damn tugs? Yes, this thing's probably not even going to get through the atmosphere. Not get to the atmosphere, rather. Alright, without ground support, their dropships won't be able to make planet fall. They'll be torn to pieces if they try. Panzer's as good as ours. I hope. I hope that that was it. And we have you to thank for it. Long live House Decimus, and long live the Arano Restoration. Mission successful. Well, no, we want the restoration to be very short. We want to get to the part where it is restored. Alright, I think our reward was somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.2 million credits and also like 314 salvage, so... That should keep us rolling for a while. It's gonna it's gonna be a minute before our mechs are really ready to run another mission, and uh, fortunately, I think our reward here will be sufficient to uh, sufficient to hold us over. Contract payment increased by fifty percent. I have no idea why, though. But hey, look at that one point seven. <laughs> yep, that'll do. We have four rep with the Arano restoration. People in the Mech Warrior universe, or the Battletech universe, I guess it's the same universe, uh, find it very difficult to trust others. So what did we lose there? Just the AC-5 and the ammo bin? That's very replaceable. I'm pretty sure we have an extra AC-5. Uh, and actually, the structural damage isn't too severe, but Behemoth's laid up for 51 days. Oof. The Jenner leading in kills. Well done there, Medusa. So what have we here? We have enough. We have we have the full Panther if we want it. Actually, this finishes our trebuchet. I'm definitely doing that. Do I want to start work on a dragon? Maybe that thing was large and impressive. A beefy machine that can take a serious beating, but tends to be a bit light on weaponry. Moves fast for a heavy mech though, which makes it well suited to closing for melee attacks against slower targets. You don't say. I'll take that and then. Is there anything in particular here? I do see a plus plus large laser. Plus 50% crit, huh? Wow, there are a lot of SRM6s on this battlefield. Plus 2 damage, plus 1 stability damage. You know, that uh, plus 1 stability damage is not inconsiderable considering how many missiles come out of that thing. You know, if you want to just sit there and consider it for a moment. Ah, we got the twenty. We got the ammo for the AC twenty, but of course I destroyed the AC twenty with great prejudice. So I think we'll take this. We certainly use SRM sixes a lot, and I'm thinking probably this large laser as well. I guess crit chance isn't that important, but man, it's it's nice to take big weapons out of the game. I don't think that this is uh, this is worth considering. The other thing we could do is we could just start a new chassis. What's the deal with this hunchback? One of the lightest mechs to mount such a massive autocannon. It's capable of destroying some lighter units in a single volley. It tends to mount heavy armor to boot. So it has three cannon hardpoints, two lasers, and a support weapon available. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's do that. Start working on these big heavy mechs as much as we can. Alright, what else did we get? We got an AC-5. Alright, that's fine. Handy. Ammo bins and stuff. Yeah, okay. Lots of SRM-6s, which is cool. I do like them. Estimated salvage value, 8.5 million C-bills. That'll keep us running for a couple of months, huh? But boy, I hope Lady Arano doesn't need us to do anything important anytime soon. We have enough pilots. Glitch will be off uh, off bed rest tomorrow, right? So we have enough pilots that we could run another big mission if we have to. We'd have to do things a little bit differently without the Shadowhawk available, though. Maybe be a little bit more cautious about our positioning. Although, the results of this mission suggest that maybe I should be a little bit more cautious with my positioning with my Shadowhawk. 
The good news is, I don't expect the repairs to be very expensive. We didn't lose a valuable weapon or anything. I, you know what, I hadn't really thought about this, actually. But as we start to acquire these more unique weapons with the, uh, the extra capabilities, I'm gonna have to start thinking a lot more about how much I expose my weapon hard points to, uh, to potential damage. Because some of this stuff is not replaceable, right? If we lost the those upgraded SRMs that are on the Jenner, I wouldn't know where to get any new ones. Lord knows we have enough SRM6s, but not fancy ones like that. We've done it, Bell. Thanks to your efforts, the Restoration Army has broken the Directorate's hold on Panzer. Lord Pierre-Louis Decimus has already pledged his house and his systems to my service. The Restoration is growing, just as we'd hoped it would. I told you, you let me blow up enough stuff. I'll get you in control of the whole galaxy. And with his support, you gain territory, soldiers, and a bolstered supply chain. Not a bad deal for you, Lady Arano. Or for House Decimus. The Directorate took a scorched earth approach to Panzer's farmland. Without our ongoing support, the people here would starve. I am not my uncle, Darius. The Restoration gives as much as it takes. Well, no, probably not as much. Also, what was the Directorate's long-term plan here? I'm not running an empire myself in my spare time or anything, but my understanding is that farmland's important because people gotta eat. Uh, well, it isn't like you have much choice. Letting them starve would be terrible, terrible PR. Look at this, I'm learning from Alexander. From a strictly pragmatic point of view, that's true. But I would help these people whether anyone was watching or not. This is what I'm fighting for, Bell. Pragmatism be damned. Please don't say that while you're leading the rebellion. We need, we need pragmatism. It's a victory, to be sure. But we're still a long way from Cormodier, and Director Espinosa has only begun to marshal his forces. Things are going to get a lot more difficult as we push forward towards Smithen. The Directorate's military capabilities appear to be way out of line with our initial estimates. Somehow, they've gained access to weapons and battle mechs that are totally foreign to the Reach. Where do you think all this hardware is coming from? We don't know. House Espinosa has always had contacts in the Inner Sphere. Lady Victoria's personal battle mech is a prototype model that's almost impossible to find outside the Draconis Combine. But this radical new military buildup is something else entirely. Wherever these weapons are coming from, it's a recent development. And a troubling one. Hey, Lord Madeira, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt, but there's something here that you may want to see. Actually, you may all want to see this. I found something strange on the Argo's nav computer. Uh, can you, can we, can we have more than that? Can you give me more than strange? Well, I appear to have stumbled onto an encrypted data archive. Somebody hid it away on the Argo's secondary storage drive. That's just my best guess, mind you. Star League era encryption software isn't really my area of expertise. Okay, so it's something old. I was wondering if it was something that had been hidden more recently, something that was expressly for Lady Arano to find, maybe? My father spent years trying to figure out how to get the Argo back to Oregon space in one piece. He was obsessed with this ship. He felt that it was important somehow. And now this. I want that archive opened, Dr. Murad. I need to know what's inside. Yeah, I think we all do. With all due respect, Lady Arano, whatever's on that drive was sealed away for a reason. So Mary, do you think it's cursed? It's just data. I've heard enough stories about lost tech and treasure hunting to know that it's a bad idea. So why don't we just leave well enough alone? Hold on, what's what's going on here? Lost tech is a term referring to the advanced technology from the Star League era that no, can no longer be manufactured with a modern industrial base. Factories and research facilities were favorite targets in the early centuries of the Succession War in efforts to deny weapons technology to one's enemies. But the result was an overall loss of technology for everyone. I need to hear these stories, maybe. Because I don't understand why we wouldn't want to know what's on this drive. Because this archive could contain something of value. And because, as I previously mentioned, I have a personal connection with this ship. I believe that this discovery is meant to lead us somewhere, and I intend to follow it. Yeah, it's a Starly Gara data drive. Of course we should try to open it. Damn right we should. You don't just leave money on the table. Anyone could tell you that. Thankfully, we can follow this lead and pursue our campaign against the Directorate at the same time. The liberation of House Carosus on Smithen is already the Restoration's next objective, and Lord Simon Carosus was High Lord Tamadi's chief technologist. 
securing the help we need will cost us nothing that we weren't already planning to pay. Alright, well that seems very settled then. Perhaps this is all just a coincidence, Miss Meyer, but I cannot help seeing the hand of fate at work here. Mastiff taught me to pay heed to my intuition, and that is what I intend to do. Okay, why do we think this guy's going to be able to open this archive? Because he knows lost tech better than anyone in the Reach. In the days of my father's reign, whenever scraps of forgotten technology were discovered in the Reach, they'd be taken to Smithen for cataloging and study. If there are answers to be found, we'll find them with him. Okay, I, that good answer. Fair enough. Lord Carosis is a hard man who doesn't suffer fools gladly. That said, he's also quite brilliant. A noble with the mind of a scholar. His adult children, Otto and Lena, were much the same. Difficult at times, to be sure, but fierce allies to House Arano. Yeah, okay. Like I said, settled. Liberate Smithen, have an audience with Lord Carosis, find out what's on this extremely old hard drive. Which is definitely still working, because why wouldn't it be? Yes, Bell. And shortly thereafter, we'll see if my father's intuition about the Argo was justified. As before, I'll contact you when we're ready to move on Smithen. For now, I'll take my leave of you. I have nobles to placate and an army to rally. And you have your own contracts to pursue, I'm sure. Yeah, and also a crew to uh, take care of. Yes, we do, Lady Arano. We're keeping busy, just as you asked us to. You all heard her. We've got some time before the next leg of the Restoration's offensive, and our client wants us to make the most of it. Time is money, so let's get back to work. Lady Arano's people scoured the spaceport and found a jackpot commander. Decommissioned griffins. Lots of them. They'll never get them working with the repair facilities they've got, but between my team and the Argos mech bay, I think we might. You can find them in the shop here on Panzer. Alright, I don't know, exactly know what a griffin is. So let's have a look at that. And we, maybe, okay, there we go. One of the latest dedicated fire support mechs to be found, the trebuchet, yeah, we, we got a trebuchet. However, trench buckets are known for running hot and don't have much in the way of protection. Yeah, well, we're pretty good at, uh... Pretty good at running long-range mechs in positions where they don't take a lot of damage. That's kind of my whole thing. Uh, so, it sounds like we have some interesting stuff to do, but uh, we're going to save that until next time, because this, this thing's gotten way out of control. So, thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time. We're going to find out what a griffin is, and then maybe do a little bit of work. And we'll see you then.